Hey, how's it going? So, I'm here in the Blue Mountain Range, as usual, of Northeast Oregon, and it is pine pollen season here. Now, your season might not be there yet, it might have come and passed, but in my reality, it's pine pollen season. And I thought, you know what? I've never done a video on pine pollen. So, um, basically, yeah, he's gonna get closer over here. This guy, yes guy, this is a male tree. There are tip typically, if something is male um, and or female options, it's typically a tree. And this is a guy, and I can tell by, look at that. That's like plant semen going everywhere. <laughs> but unlike other pollens that people are, are allergic to, I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna gather it here. So what you wanna do, some people use a paper bag. I like using a plastic bag so I can see how I'm doing. Um, I'm gonna, Cover it like that, right? Check it out, have get, come get close, have get close, like you can somehow tell him to get close. And I am gonna tap his testicles, <laughs> basically. And I am going to, look at all that pollen I'm gathering. Now, you can also trim these and take them if you want. Don't worry, they are legion, they are everywhere. But you can also come back in a day or so and he will produce more. Um, so you're not really hurting anything. And so I'm going to go around the tree again and again and have this guy bust a nut into my bag. <laughs> now, why do we want this pollen? That right there is like golden powder. It is so amazing for supporting hormonal health. Um, now, a lot of people think of pollen, they're like, I'm allergic to all pollen. My allergy said all pollen. I'm like, your allergy test said all pollen that they tested for. And most allergy tests aren't um, testing specifically for pine um, or any conifers unless you've had a specific reaction to that. And they don't tend to cause allergies in people because unlike other pollens that come from a flower, although they are, I'm not going to say there aren't hormones and stuff in those because it's the same thing. Um, he is really loaded down with a lot of hormone precursors. So if you're somebody who's low in testosterone, low in DHEA, um, which is like a master hormone that converts to either progesterone or estrogen or testosterone, whatever you're needing. Now, she's, he's also stuck in the she there, right? He also produces a ton of minerals. This is like, I don't like the term superfood because it's really used to just market like exotic crap that's really not more nutritious than let's say something like beef liver but if i was going to call something um a super pollen i would call this a super pollen this is better than bee pollen by far um i've personally been using it pretty often because as a female like i have low testosterone and i don't mean like all females have low testosterone we have less testosterone than men do, but we still can have low levels that affect our energy, our libido, all that stuff. So like if you have a hard time like feeling sexy, <laughs> if you don't really have a really high sex drive, that could of course be just who you are as a person, but it also could be that your testosterone is in like the toilet, <laughs> like you're not making enough. And that's really common because we live in a world where there's estrogenic food everywhere, like there's soy and everything, and that crap is nasty. It loads you down, it makes you estrogen dominant. And when you're estrogen dominant, all of your other um, needed hormones, like progesterone or testosterone, get pushed way down. And then you start having all kinds of symptoms like really, really bad period cramps or like low libido, inability to orgasm, all that kind of stuff. Um, now this pollen, you're like, what in the hell do we do with this? golden bag of semen. <laughs> um, so what I like to do with it is either mix it with honey, and that's a really traditional way to do it, and then just use that honey and some hot water. It has a very mild flavor. This isn't going to overpower anything. Some people like to cook with it. Some people sprinkle it on their food. Um, I like to make a tincture out of it as well. One thing that's a tip to know is that, okay, so this pollen right here, is full of like really tough rigid cellular structure right when you buy pollen from overseas they're typically irradiating it which is really nasty stuff and they're doing that to break open the cellular wall but 
I've got a tip for you that like involves no need for radiation or radiating something. Put it in the freezer. <laughs> Put it in the freezer for like 48 hours, 72 hours. Um, if you don't have a chest freezer, you have one that opens just from a normal fridge, stick it way in the back and leave it there for at least a week. So what happens when you put a pop in the freezer or a soda, whatever you call it in the freezer, right? It, it expands and it blows up, right? So think of a cellular structure when it's being put in the fridge, in the freezer I should say, when it freezes, the liquid that's inside of this expands and breaks the cellular wall. Then make your tincture, then mix it into your honey, then sprinkle it on your food. Uh, now a tincture will kind of do the same thing where it breaks down the cellular structure of it, um, but I just feel like it works better to crack that cell wall if I freeze it first. And I've done a few experiments where if I don't freeze it, I don't, I, I feel how my body feels. I feel like I'm not getting as much. I'm having to use more more often. Um, and so pine pollen is really amazing stuff. It's super easy to gather. Again, I'll show you with, as a short person, <clears throat> I'll reach up here. And this is ponderosa pine. Um, you can use just about any pine. And I'm gonna put it right over the whole branch there. And I'm shake the hill out of it. Oh, I lost some from up there. <laughs> you know, and you just keep, sometimes if you just flick it, you know, I've even seen people make, um, you know how they make like, like breast milk cookies, right? It's usually got fenugreek and other stuff that won't replace the fact that you're probably not eating enough protein and animal fats, but, uh, you can also make little testosterone cookies, right? That way, like, you can guesstimate how much is in each little cookie that you're eating. Um, and then I'm just going to pull it off. And close that bag up because it's windy. And I'll tap it all down. And I got a little bit more. And it, it takes it takes a bit of tree. It takes a bit of tree to get this job done. And you're like, there's crap in there. <laughs> what you're going to do when you are when you take this home in a non-windy environment, just put it through a little sieve. Just, you know, dump it through, you know, a little metal colander type sieve that's got really fine mesh on it. And it'll get all that stuff out. And that stuff won't hurt you. It's part of the tree too. So um, that's pine pollen. Pine pollen is really amazing. It's really overlooked. And if you live somewhere where there's a lot of pine population or there's even like an ornamental, like somebody planted it in your yard to look attractive, pine is everywhere. There's pine in the deep desert. There's pine in like the Arctic. You can find pine trees even if you live in a town. You don't have to have access to like vast wildlife areas um, because she's just such a common one. And I really like about this is that you don't actually have to really remove anything from the tree. He's just going to create more. That's kind of, I mean, could you imagine if guys of any species could only finish once <laughs> and then not be able to create more? He's going to create more. The season usually lasts about a week, a week and a half. And what's cool about where we live is we have like varying elevations. So like they were done like two weeks ago down lower, but they're just starting up here and we can just keep going higher. And so I can follow the season for the better part of like a month, a month and a half um, until I've got like a nice fat sack of plant semen. <laughs> so that's pine pollen. Remember that you are absolutely smart enough to do that. I mean, how hard was that? I just shook a plant off into a bag. <laughs> There was a big joke there that I could have taken. I didn't take it. Um, that makes me more mature than I was yesterday, maybe. But uh, if you like my videos and hearing me talk about very sexual organs on plants, make sure to like, subscribe, comment, turn on notifications, share. Sharing is important because when you share, it helps other people learn that they're smart enough to do this too. If you're watching me on YouTube, come find me on Instagram. If you're watching me on Instagram, come find me on YouTube. I share all kinds of different information on different platforms and so well thanks for watching and i'll see you next time bye